and recovery efforts are still underway at the Suez Canal after a massive container ship the size of a skyscraper got stuck across the waterway and blocked all the traffic. Egypt's Suez Canal Authority has temporarily suspended navigation through one of the world's busiest shipping lanes and the Japanese owner of the container ship stuck in the Suez Canal has apologized and his father said that it was working towards a resolution of the situation. Now the ever given a Panama flagged ship run by the company Evergreen that carries cargo between Asia and Europe ran aground on Tuesday. Tuesday, images showed the ship's bow was touching the eastern wall, while its stern looked as if it were lodged against the western wall. Now, the tugboats were seen trying to nudge the obstruction out of the way as ships hoping to enter the waterway began lining up. The Swiss Canal authorities said that they were trying to rebalance the ship and that efforts could shift towards digging the ship out if the tugboats were unsuccessful. Now the ship's stranding is threatening to disrupt a global shipping system already strained by the coronavirus pandemic. Experts warn that even a two or three day delay can have adverse impact. A lot of these refineries run on very tight schedules, right? So even a one, two, three day delay really impacts things and they're scrambling and they need slates and they need crews so they're going to pay up for it. Handout pictures released by the Swiss Canal Authority shows how the Taiwan-owned ever given a 400-meter long and 59-meter wide vessel lodged sideways, thus impending, uh, impeding the all traffic across uh, the waterway of Egypt's Swiss Canal. The Swiss Canal Authority said that eight tugboats were working on the vessel uh, to move the vessel, which got stuck diagonally across the single-lane southern stretch of the canal. Several dozen vessels, including other large container ships, tankers carrying oil and gas, and bulk vessels hauling grain, have backed up at either end of the canal to create one of the worst shipping jams. Around 12% of the world's trade flows through the waterway opened in 1869. It is a crucial link for oil, natural gas, and cargoes being shipped from east to the west. It is also a major source of hard currency for Egypt and generated $5.6 billion in 2020. There are also 25 crew members on board that are of Indian nationality. The Suez Canal is one of those absolutely strategic waterways of the world like the Panama Canal is. It carries about 12% of world trade each year. That's roughly in, uh, in monetary terms about $1.1 trillion worth of cargo passed through the Suez Canal, about $3 billion every day. About 18,000 ships use it a year, it's about 50 ships a day, so it's absolutely key. So you get something like this, a ship effectively blocking it, you actually really are blocking that, that trade flow. In fact, the impact of the canal's blockage is already being felt. Oil prices rose about 6% on Wednesday after worries that the incident could tie up crude shipments. And now, Mayor Javed Anfar, Iran expert, Middle East analyst and co-author of The Nuclear Sphinx of Tehran, joins us from Tel Aviv. Now, recovery efforts, as I mentioned, are still underway at the Swiss Canal after the ship container and the size of the skyscraper got stuck. Now, what can you tell us about that? Um, <clears throat> yes, the, the ship is stuck sideways and, and the mm. bad news is that it would take a couple of weeks. Yes, you heard that right, a couple of weeks to uh, to uh, free it up. There are uh, already concerns that the current infrastructure that there is around the ship, the tugboats are not going to be able to do it on their own. Mm. And there's going to be a need to reduce the weight of the ship by bringing in perhaps helicopters to remove some of the containers on the ship and its other cargo uh, in order to lighten its load. So this is something that is not going to go away. Uh, this is a major source of concern for the Egyptians first and foremost. Hmm. And also for the international trade, we have to wait. remember that currently, as we speak today, there's 150 ships waiting behind this ship hmm. uh, the, the, to to get up, to get through the Suez Canal. So uh, the next few weeks are going to be very, very difficult for the owners of the ship, for Egypt, and also for the world markets. Because, as you quite rightly said, they're just recovering from COVID, and now we yes. have this. Yes. On that note, oil prices rose about 6% on Wednesday after worries that the incident could tie up crude shipments. What can you tell us about that? Well, that's the issue with that there is already concerns regarding uh, uh, issues such as the late uh, delivery of the, of the crude. But we also have to remember that as strange as this incident and as un uh, unexpected it is for some uh, that it happened, 
uh, we have to remember that the, the Suez Canal was already widened in 2015 by the Egyptians. Hmm. The Egyptians spent a lot of money widening the Suez Canal. But you have unexpected uh, uh, issues, unexpected accidents that happened. Yes, the, the market did not expect it, which is why we see there is a, the concerns regarding the supply of uh, crude oil. But this is something that uh, it's maybe it's a, we could call it the force of God or something close to that because this is something that has never happened before in the Suez Canal, and the markets are going to uh, the markets have reacted, and I think that the markets are going to get worse because, as I have said, this Absolutely. could take a couple of weeks, and the fact that people were not expecting it, this could create panic among some of the uh, oil suppliers and oil buyers, uh, but we have to wait and see. Yes, uh, you're right, Mr. Javdanfar. As we also mentioned, Egypt's uh, Swiss Canal Authority have already temporarily suspended navigation through the shipping lanes. How do you think this will impact the situation now? Well, I, I would not like to be in the shoes of uh, President Sisi. Egypt is already going through a very difficult year, and um, financially speaking, COVID has decimated tourism receipts. Tourism is one of the major another major income earner for the economy of Egypt. But now, uh, because of the COVID, there are very few, if any, tourists going to Egypt. Uh, and that has cost billions of dollars. And COVID has had another uh, uh, impact on, on the Egyptians, Egypt's economy. And now we have this issue of the Suez Canal. So um, things were bad already for Egypt's economy. They could get worse. Absolutely. All right, Mr. Javdan, for thank you so much for joining us with all your inputs. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.